Okay, in this video we're checking out the uh, Eosheen TS-130. This is a 3-inch version or follow-up to the very popular TS-215, the 5-inch. That came out about, I don't know, about 3-4 months ago, I think. I'm not exactly sure when that came out. But this is a, an obviously 3-inch version. Uh, it's kind of, uh, looks like a micro-floss frame. Unibody bottom plate, 130 millimeters motor to motor, 3 millimeter bottom plate, and... Uh, we have a 2 millimeter top plate here, so very minimal in terms of frame. I think all the weight is going to be in the motors here. Super large uh, motors, e Sheen branded, uh, 1507, 4100 kV, very notchy, very strong magnets. And they went with the uh, regular prop nut and reverse prop nut orientation for whatever reason, so I'll be running the props in the standard configuration. The motors, um, uh, they look okay. Pretty tight air gap. I think they're flat magnets. Open bottom design. Uh, yeah, 12 millimeter hole pattern for the motors. Yeah, I, I don't know who makes their motors now. This looks like the uh, the same ones from the Sprog series and also the ones from the TS215. Same, probably the same factory. Uh, decent. I'm not sure about the winding so much. We'll see how, let's see how hot this motor gets because these motors are really strong. Got a Fox here Aero Micro in the front, very nice and pretty um, basic stack here, but uh, nothing, nothing really wrong with it. Got a uh, video transmitter here, power switchable from zero to 200 milliwatts, and it does have smart audio. Got an F4 flight controller with Betaflight OSD, uh, MQ6000 gyro, pretty standard stuff there, and then we have a 4-in-1 20 amp BLHeli SESC, so up to DSHOT 600. And this is a 20 by 20 stack. Got a standard, uh, like uh, not standard, looks like a 15 millimeter uh, battery strap on the bottom here. Hopefully, it'll be big enough uh, to hold the the 750 milliamp hour lipo that I'll be using. This does come as a plug and play, so obviously there's no receiver on here. So I'll have to um, uh, cut this off and solder on like an XM plus, and I'll probably just stick it un under this little plate here, just with a zip tie. And just comes on a little plug there, so it should be pretty easy if you know how to solder on a receiver. Uh, I think later on there will, there will be pl um, bind and fly versions, probably with different receiver options, but currently only the plug and play is available. The uh, whip antenna here is a micro FL connector, so if you want to upgrade that, it shouldn't be too hard to find alternative antennas. But I think I'm going to have to change this uh, the way this is uh, mounted here. This is zip tied to the back uh, little the hole here, and I think. Yeah, if that might get into the props, so probably going to put a, uh, a zip tie here on this standoff with some heat shrinking up straight and back so that the, the antenna will stay up like this, and that should give you pretty good reception. Um, yeah, let's see here, we got these Dow Cyclone 3056 propellers, I'll be using those on here. Um, yeah, so not a whole lot to get this in the air. Now, one thing that I should note is that this was sent to me with no tune on it and just a really old version of Betaflight Flash with default settings so it looks like they just flashed Betaflight 317 to the board and didn't do any kind of a setup so no smart audio was set up, no tune, nothing like that so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, in the next part of this video, go to the computer I'm going to flash uh, the latest Betaflight, I think 352 is the latest one right now onto the board and, and then we'll take it to the uh, field and the first part of the video will be a, a little bit of a pit tune. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, you know, do it in one pack. And then I'll show you uh, an actual pack with some more flight footage after that. So go to the computer now. Anyway, so before we go to the computer, I'll go ahead and give you the weight of this because I know everyone's going to ask me how much this thing weighs. Okay, so it's 133 and a half grams. Uh, I've got to throw the props on here too. And comes in at 141 grams with the props. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and flash uh, Betaflight to the TS-130. I have a, uh, another video that covers Betaflight 3.5 and a basic setup. So if you want more detailed information on all the settings I'm putting, going to put in here to show you, uh, I'm going to just quickly go over this. I'm going to just, um, not explain everything. So watch the other video. Uh, card in the corner if you want a more detailed explanation of what's going on here. I'm just going to show you what I'm going to be putting on to the flight controller and some basic settings and we'll go off to the field and we'll do some a little bit of tuning so don't get too bogged down in the details but if you just follow along here and flash uh, 
the firmware that I'm going to put on here as well as the settings, you ought to be good to go. But you can uh, watch the video if you want more details on uh, explanations on what's going on. So uh, the board on here is a Omnibus F4SD. So you want to make sure you select that. And I believe the latest version is 3.5.2. You want to select full chip erase. Load the firmware. And we'll go ahead and flash it. Okay, so we should go ahead and connect to the board here and we'll calibrate the accelerometer. And then you want to check, make sure that it's it's actually in a proper orientation. It looks like that's fine. I don't think that they put a, uh, any kind of orientation in there since the default. And we'll go to ports here. The S bus receiver uh, is going to be on UART 6, and I think um, Smart Audio is on UART 3. I'm not 100% sure on that. I'll put something here uh, on the screen if I'm wrong. It might be on UART 1. I don't know yet. I'll find out a little later. And then we'll go ahead and reboot. Okay, so under configuration, uh, normal prop direction, you want to select D Shot 600. And here, that's an F4, so I'm going to go all the way to 8K, 8K, and I am going to turn off the accelerometer because I don't fly self-level. Um, obviously, if you're going to be flying angle mode, you're going to want to put this on, but I'm turning this off. Put in our craft name. And then here in the receiver, I'm going to be setting up an SBUS receiver. Uh, if you have a different setup, IBUS, Spectrum, whatever, obviously select the receiver you're going to be using here. And then under these features, I'm going to have air mode on. Uh, there's no other things like LED strip here, so I'm going to leave everything else as default. And there's no buzzer in this, so I'm going to actually turn on the um, motor beeper here. And under crash flip, I usually turn that beeper off. Under power and battery, I'm just going to leave everything as default. I don't think there's a current sensor on here, but I'm just going to leave it as default. Pit tuning, uh, I'm going to leave everything as default here. Here you can just put your whatever rates you normally use, and I'm just going to put mine in here like so. Um, these are the numbers I like to use for pit controller settings. You can watch the other video to ex if you want an explanation of what's what, and this is just stuff that I'm going to be using. I um, I actually, in the other video, I have Smart Feed Forward turned on, but I've learned that that really doesn't do anything, so I don't use that anymore. And then under iTerm Relax, I just turn that on. Um, usually, any gravity gain, I can leave it alone as 5. Sometimes I need, you may need more, or you can adjust the eye over here. Generally, this is actually better adjusted here. And I may need to adjust TPA because of the big motors. We'll have to see uh, when I go and fly it, so uh, watch later on in the video. Under filter settings, I'm going to leave everything as default. So basically, it's a, this is all default settings here, and we'll go and fly it and get a feel for what is uh, working and not working, and then we can adjust it uh, as uh, I fly it around in the tuning session. You'll see that first before the actual flight demo. And then in a receiver, I have a SBUS receiver in here. I'm going to turn on RSSI. I think it's on AUX5. And then I just change my thresholds here to 1,000, 2,000. And then I do usually add a little bit of dead band. And then under RC smoothing, I turn on filter. That usually uh, gives me the best uh, the, or starting setup for Betaflight 3.5. And then these are the modes I'm setting up. This is just for my particular transmitter, so you're going to need to change this for yours. Uh, I usually put the beeper on AUX2. And then uh, turtle mode on AUX2, like this. So you're going to have to ch uh, do set up your modes, uh, obviously, for your transmitter. This is for my transmitter. And then under OSD, uh, I think it's an NTSC camera. I'm, uh, I was, I'm not 100% sure on that. I'll check that here in a second. But if it's not, then I'll change that later. Usually I put on the screen things like battery voltage, the RSSI value. I usually use timer 2, and I put the craft name up here. 
and uh, I'll usually put the throttle position over here above the battery just to give you an idea of how much throttle I'm using and then I can watch the voltage sag here as well and, and the last thing I usually so hit save and then uh, usually change my on-screen font to vision And that's pretty much it, so go ahead and take it out to the field, we'll do a little bit of tuning, and give you some more flight demo footage. Okay, so I actually spent about 10 packs trying to tune this thing, and I think that uh, a lot of the vibrations I was getting uh, in the initial tuning sessions had to do with the um, way the flight stack was mounted. Basically it's hard mounted to the frame, and a lot of the motor and frame vibrations are getting to the gyro. I uh, think that they need to fix that in a, an updated version of this where they soft mount the flight controller. I think that will help a lot. I um, had to actually add a lot of filtering and a lot of TPA and uh, the pack you're going to see here right after I talk is going to be about the best tune that I could get, at least with my knowledge of pit tuning. And I think that without soft mounting the flight controller there's not much you, you can do in terms of getting it better. And so, yeah, I think that they need to make some uh, modifications to the design to soft mount the flight controller, and then obviously they need to send this out with a updated version of Betaflight with a complete set of tune uh, PIDs on there before they ship it out. Right now it just came completely just nothing, and I wouldn't recommend this for a beginner. But um, I think that someone maybe uh, has some skills could possibly mod this on their own, soften out the flight controller and probably get some better results here. I just tried to get the best results I could with the way the hardware came to me without actually modding it. So this is what you're going to see. Um, yeah, in terms of whether or not this is better than anything else out there like the GTM3 or any other 3 inch ones out there, I think this is pretty average. Uh, I was expecting better from this model and I think it's because of the, the way that they mounted the flight controller. Um, if they change that design, I think there's the potential there of having a better uh, three inch model is there but obviously the way it came to me is the way I'm going to review it and this is what you're going to see so here's the flight uh, and the PIDs that you know that I used and you can be the judge for yourself as to if this is good enough or not and then uh, uh, if you guys want to see a future video mods whatever let me know in the comments below I'll take that into consideration uh, maybe do a future video on this one anyway here's the flight <laughs> 